and we are rolling. So uh, if anyone has a question, unmute, but otherwise keep yourself muted. So if you have background noise, it doesn't uh, jump in the middle of us here. Thank you for that. That makes a huge difference. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll give you the floor. All right. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hi everybody. Um, so today, instead of doing like a big slide prep, because I noticed I kind of just stuck to it a little too much, um, and I wanted to make sure I'm kind of pulling you towards an end goal of going off and doing some of your own projects. So I'm just going to show you what it's like because that was the question. It's like, what do you? What does it look like to do some of this? And so it'll seem rather simple. And I want it to seem simple so that you go, but also I, as a result, probably won't take as long as a usual presentation. I'd rather hear where you want to steer it as we go. So I'll start with the most important part, which is we're going to make just a couple of changes, maybe even only one to a project I've been working on. I um, probably mentioned this last time. I've been working with these devices. Let's see if I can get this. There we go. This is a micro bit and it says so on the back. And the short version is, maybe I'll do the medium version. No. The main version is this, that way back in 1981, uh, in the early eighties in the UK, they had had this project called that the BBC, the, you know, the national television service, wanted to have a TV show that would get kids into programming. The fear was Britain was falling behind in the process of going from mainframes to microcomputers. And they wanted to make sure that there was some kind of option. So there was this huge, there's a great movie about this, but it came down to this small company that had just started over in Cambridge, UK, wound up creating this machine that got known as the BBC Micro, and they would teach classes based on everybody having this machine. Uh, it was relatively cheap, and but in those days, they were talking in the days of like, say, the VIC-20. So it competed on that kind of level for, oh, well, here's a machine where you can do basic and things go on. And they eventually came out with a second, like a cheaper version, and they came out with uh, the first, they invented the arm reduced, uh, uh, arm risk machine, the uh, ACORN. Ugh, let me try again. ACORN risk machine, arm, the chip that's in all our phones and in a lot of these things. That the whole point was that this led to a whole lot of great changes. It also meant that Britain went from being behind to way ahead. No other country had this level of integration of everybody has been playing with these programs, no matter how, like normally this would get you beaten up and instead it's everybody. So everybody got into like making tiny programs, even if they did them on cassette because disk drives were too expensive. It really drove a sense of how that happened. So they want to kind of bring that back. And so this group um, that had started the work with the Raspberry Pi also got to work on, well, let's see, what would be the equivalent now of doing retro? Something Internet of Thingsy. And they came up with this, where it's got a five by five LED grid, a couple of clicky, 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 clicky buttons, um, and a reset button on the back, USB, but also about five pins where you could clip any alligator clip or, oh, sorry, hold it up for them. And, and now, oh, it, oh, that's right, you guys can see it as well too. There we go. So you see where it says zero, one, two, three, yeah, three volts and ground. So that seems obvious, but even more so, the other parts are also pins. Uh, and that's why I've got this case here, is that you can break them out. Here's one tool for breakout called the Gator Bit from SparkFun. And it's rather obvious. You plug it in. You can now do the power from here instead. And you've got every single pin broken out, but also more lights. In this case, they're RGB lights, more fun to play with. Also, it allows you to start doing things like, okay, do I need to have the power here? It's got some tools for sound that they go a little better. And so it's this thing for kids to learn programming on. And it was one of the things that took this MicroPython idea that I talked about 
last time and made it even more approachable. It stopped being one company and their attempt to sell their boards and then maybe something else to something very standardized. That's also like 12 to 15 bucks. I mean, the breakout board is also only like 12 bucks if you really need it. And most people don't because a lot of the things you want are already there. It has an accelerometer, which means you can, you know, obviously you can do things like location, but it also means you can do, and this may sound far-fetched, but you could start teaching things like getting real random numbers. Oh, tasty. And some of you are like, what? You remember when you used to build a Linux box? In the old days, when the command line was it, and there you go, and the dinosaur would go by. Well, but you remember one of the things that would happen is if it had a mouse in the build setup, there would be the time where you go, okay, move the mouse around and it would be the seed for R&D. Well, now you can have a seed anytime and it can be real based on actual, like pick any of the vectors, swap out which vectors, flip things around. This is an educational tool beyond compare because one, it's actually kind of tricky to break but it also plugs right in and the kids get to work and they can make the lights do things. So this has led to some new iterations. This one, I even put its little backpack on. So it's like, like an electric hobo. This is version two. You can tell because these little bits are blue instead of being yellow or green. Um, it still has the five by five grid, but it's got a lot more sensors. And I'm actually gonna take the cutesy build it yourself paper backpack that comes with a box. Um, it's a better chip. It has more storage. It also has full audio, like it can record, it can record and playback sound. It has, let's see if I can remember some of the, oh, it, it has uh, Bluetooth. It has a full antenna for Bluetooth. Um, and otherwise it is, oh, and, and the antenna is right there. Yeah. Um, so, and also even something as simple as with both cases, you can scan the little QR code to get going. So if you, all you have in your life is a cell phone, for a lot of kids, that's what they've got. They can get going on programming projects based only on, oh, I'm not even sure how to look this, oh, I don't have to. They get started. And this means for us, they sell these at Micro Center, like they've got stashes of them. Like, like you, could, you go into the store and you'll find them tucked in between other things. So it's not a problem to get them. Um, but also, it, it still has the problem, one little, oh, you have a question. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Um, one, because uh, the, uh, the, the CircuitPython people now have a website version. So if you're not allowed to install anything, like it's its school phone or something. But also, there are apps that let you do, um, I mean, there are, tools none of and they're all free tools i even have on my phone a couple of things that do this hello phone uh, see how fast i can show this without seeming nuts no it's too late for that um but lesser social flying driving terminals here we go okay so my android phone and on here i've got uh this thing called blue term which allows you to do uh, uh, set up a terminal using uh, with Bluetooth for the communication, basically serial over Bluetooth. Serial over Bluetooth, we've all had our fits with it. It's still one of those, it shouldn't be weird and yet it bleeping is. It's, I mean, it's great if what you've been thinking is, I just haven't played with Hayes modem settings in a long time. AT plus should really mean something to the kids these days. Oh, you got it. Uh, but it, it, but it, funny thing is when you're done, you're like, oh, well, yeah, but then that part of your brain, if, you know, for all of us suddenly kicks in and goes, oh, but I'm not really worried about baud rates, it's set. And if I want to put music over it, that's fine too. Um, it, uh, so, but there are tools to do that. So yes, ha ha, uh, I would recommend buying a little Bluetooth keyboard too, but you know, six of one. Um, I just, but, total side. I usually carry a Bluetooth, a little Bluetooth keyboard around. I must have bought it a decade ago. Maybe, maybe it was only five years ago. I guess it was five. We'll say five. God, that sounded so Trump. Oh God, let's try again. So five years ago, I bought a Bluetooth keyboard 
And just last week, uh, two weeks ago, I finally changed the batteries that came with it. And they were like the, the heavy duty ones. They weren't even alkaline. Like this thing just sipped. Never had to worry. It's so cool. So point is, yes, that is totally possible. But it also means that it doesn't matter how old the kid's computer is or the adult's computer is, you can get this kind of stuff working. Um, if you don't have Bluetooth, it's easy to plug in with any leftover USB wire. But now we come to something slightly more interesting and it's actually about six months older than the version two, but it is, these things needed screens. Now I'd mentioned last time about the Adafruit and SparkFun people. The Adafruit people, um, is some of you may, I've, how many of you remember the cult of the dead cow? Just me. All right. Uh, they were the original hacktivists. Anyway, they, one of their one of their members is was Ada Libor, who is Lady Ada, Ada Fruit. Um, so with this, it uses the same form factor, but there's a very different chip, and it's got a screen. And in fact, so with uh, so for example, when you plug in a, one of these, uh, when you plug in the 1.0 first time, it has a little thing saying, okay. It, like it'll scroll across, press A and point to advanced B. Okay, do this, roll it around, blah, blah, blah. I don't get to see how it works. When you do it with version two, it's actually making annoying chip noises, really wonderful in public or at the office. But this one instead, it's hello world is telling you exactly where you and it are. It is giving information, including barometric pressure. It is, in fact, uh, just quickly, it's even telling you, okay, it's running QSP, it's a QSPI chip, um, file system not found, and tells you which sensors it has. So you can look them up and get all the specs. I mean, this is, that's the hello world. Talk about, play with me, make me do weird things. Make a metal band and chip tune. Yes, sir, I'm here. So calling it the clue, it really is. And it's even cute, they've got like, uh, um, They've got fingerprints where the buttons are. That's, that's cute. I really like. But I mean, a full screen, a um, little better, you know, pieces. And, but otherwise, you're not, um, it doesn't mean that you are stuck in some way. It even has connections to Stemma and some of the quick stuff, uh, which the quick QWIIC is this. I think most of the quick stuff came from SparkFun, but they're these modular tools. They're kind of kid-like, but I mean, they do make it easier to set up. It's just that they cost more than they're really worth. They are pre-built though. So if you're like, I don't want to have to do SMD or go hunt down chips, hmm, you got these. But we all know hunting down chips is kind of part of the fun. Um, but look also, the RGB light is working by default and cycling through colors. Colors. Pretty colors, I like the purples. Um, people ask if I'm sane and it's just, this one is particularly from Adafruit, but I did buy it at Micro Center. So it, it, they got their money. Um, and this one was, uh, again, I think I paid, if I paid 25, I might've paid too much. Like it, it was only like a little bit more, I don't know, maybe it actually was 40, but it was, it was more than those because you're getting something specific being able to address a screen. Now they've done, and of course the Adafruit people have done things with screens as you know, bigger screens. This one's actually a project they did with DigiKey. So uh, this is called the Pi Portal. And again, you program in Pi. Now uh, in Python. Now, one of the things you might be thinking is, oh, wait a minute, why do we have to go to a high level language? What if we want to do low level language? And in most cases with these devices, you can, I think, so similar to when we had the presentation about free RTOS, um, a lot of these boards tend towards a RTOS-like uh, real-time setup called Embed OS. And they're as simple as you, you just register at their site and you've got access to a whole lot of information, great access to APIs. And, uh, but also like, oh, you can get going on a surprising number of machines right away. Like this also runs on the blue pill. It runs, which is uh, an STM32 based uh, chip, you, you know, solder on the legs and boom, there you go. Um, a surprising number of, of devices. But 
here's the thing. While there are the two different MicroPythons that we talked about, the, the MicroPython and CircuitPython, and that they have some differences, in general, a lot of these devices, because they were developed by the people who are interested in promoting Python to make it easier for kids and schools to get involved, there will be libraries in Python and not necessarily in C. So you may actually have to figure out how to get it to do, like you can write straight C code, but you better know where the registers are. Or, and, and to be fair, just thinking about that question makes me go, well, how hard, but I'm gonna have to save that for a little bit. Uh, if, if my luck holds out tomorrow with the interview I've got, I might be busy again. <laughs> Thank goodness, because that means like, cash. I, I like, I, like I, I owe my wife. Um, I don't like that. Um, what I have to owe her, you know? She has to put up with me. What, that's just worse, God. Um, anyway, point is that these are, these are awesome little tools. And they're just one example. I could bring my butterfly collection, but I've learned that just gets messy. We'd rather just see one of them. And since we've already got this really pretty one, let's see how far we can get it. Now, so, Let's do the next part, looking at code. And now we share a screen. Oh, um, you got to hit the, uh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Yeah. It may have timed out. Okay, here we go. I am going to, actually, I'll just do the whole screen. Oh, big screen of love. All right, and so that everybody doesn't have to see themselves. There we go. So my tiny notes and some video, but is, oh, oh, it's even, oh, that's, that's a breakout. Um, here we go. In fact, as we were talking about, just so you can get an idea for the prices. So the Microbit 2, 15 bucks. They're out of stock here. They're not out of stock up in, uh, at, yep, at Micro Center. And this, let's see, da, 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 da. no, that's an automation tool, more mounters. Here it is, the actual clue. So yeah, this is 40 bucks. And notice it's actually telling us about, and I've got that page up here, the, just as we saw before, and it's, it's even a video of it. So you can see, it's even giving the mic levels, um, has a, so, and, and it's nice to have the specs right here. A Nordic NRF 52, 840, which is uh, the next generation. So instead of the 51 series, the 52 series, it's got a megabyte of flash, 256K of RAM, a 64 megahertz Cortex M4 processor. Let's just take a moment here and realize how much more powerful this is than many of our first and second computers. Okay. Um, that it has a 240 by 240, 1.3 inch color. TFT display. It can get power from three to six volts, which means, and of course, like they, you know, it means that anything like this can power it. Uh, LiPo is probably going to be, do you better because uh, then you get 3.7, uh, they're lighter batteries. You got the Neo Pixel, we already saw that, that you can, uh, oh, and it's got an extra two megabit, uh, megabytes of internal flash for data logging. Um, a buzzer, a speaker, uh, a steamboat, a chicken, a tropical fish. Um, okay, it does not actually have any of the light bright features except that it beats the light bright. Um, but as you can see, it does talk about that, yes, you could use the Arduino IDE to write code for it, which means you can write in C. I just don't know how those, how those pieces would work out. However, what we can find out today, since we're going to start from, I think it's this one that I've got the, the quick test. So quick test time. Is it this one? Yes. I think it's going to be this one that if I power it on. Hello. Hi. Get in there. There we go. Ah, yes. Okay. So I, I showed this. Oh, you're right. There. Sorry. I forgot. Um, but, uh, uh, oh, hey, wait a minute. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. So stop share. Okay. So. Your center, no, oh no, it's me, okay. So here it is. This is a simple program I put on here where you click the button and you click the button on this side and it increases the number 
On this side, it decreases. And the whole point was this was part of uh, coming up with a set of numbers that looked good enough. Now, when you look at the code for this, and um, for sanity check, we talked about Moo last time, so we'll pull it up in Moo. If it, okay, this should not be the thing. There we go. Oh, could not find a circuit Python device, but that, anyway, we'll deal with that later. Um, so I will unplug you. And now plugging in so we can see if it's gonna dump or not. Don't dump or plug in. There we go, got it. 17. Depth link seems, wow, okay. I've used you on here before. Oh, right, it does that with my trackball every time too. So here we are, still plugged in for battery just so it doesn't totally lose it every time, but there we go. Okay, maybe now detected, yes. Yes, okay, okay. So we are now set to micro bit. So see these, oh, you're right, der. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally an adult, I swear. Um, here we go, back to screen share. Okay, so when we're looking, so we're here in Moo and we're looking at the code. And in this case, the first line right here, Let's see if I can zoom, oh, yep, there we go. Big read, Woot. Um, So here we've got from micro bit import star. So import everything from the micro bit library. Very, you, you can tell that even though it's slightly easier to read, we're still kind of doing some C thinking. You know, we're not making it, it's not happening later. It's not some separate stack part, it's here. Assigning, so we start with some of our basic stuff, assigning good old, by default, you've got, if you don't even have to put a prefix, you don't have to put a dollar sign or what have you to identify a type. You can clarify, but if it doesn't have one, it will assume that you have a variable. It actually assumes a list with zero contents, and then you're adding contents. So we can instantiate and populate on the first run. In this case, we're doing an image, which is a value from micro bit. And these are all uh, straight values for the light intensity on PWM. And you'll see that I've, I could have made them a long string, but then it's not legible. It does allow you by doing this break with the colons to use multiple lines. And so now it looks like the number that it's going to be. And yes, because I'm a dork, I made it so when it's number zero, it looks like no, you know, number zero, one, blah, blah, blah. And we go all the way down. And then there's also, I forgot how I wound, oh, the John Doe which is, uh, in this case, it, you can tell it's an X, so that you could, um, this comes from a, a different set of things. But, and all I've got here is, so next I, I define what tends to be called, oh, yeah, I'll just blow this up and then just a little zoom out. Uh, yes, this is all, I'm sorry, this is all Python. This is in fact, um, the circuit Python that we were talking about. So I've set another variable, and in this case, by putting it inside of, of braces, and yes, you've got highlighting, very good. Um, you can say, okay, I define this element, you know, it's straight, you know, key to value, normal, what they call dictionaries here. Um, you can also have a type that's, uh, types that are called tuples, which are, uh, they're sort of prefix. Once you define them, they cannot change. Which is, yeah, you think of it as, oh, preprocessor stuff. Yes, in C. Um, we go, so we go down. I'm saying, okay, this buffer value is zero. The, basically, the, I'm setting default values for the buttons and then defining, okay, while true, yay. Um, <laughs> when's it false? When there's no power, yeah. Um, if latch A is not, button A is pressed. And this is a, this kind of phrasing, this, uh, you know, using underscore dot and then having a subdescription is common. This is, so this bit is straight out of the IDE, out of the uh, API. So button A is pressed. Now you might say, well, how am I gonna get some of that info? Sometimes you gotta go to websites, it's true, but there is a tool. And yes, I know this is on my Windows box, but uh, because it's, I don't have money right now to replace 
But there's this tool and it's in Linux as well called Zeal. And it allows you to go get documentation for all sorts of stuff. Now you notice that, the, well, one of the things you may notice is that some, uh, some uh, groups of things require their own separate, such as uh, Jinja, which is a set of tools for running website, uh, static websites off Python, which let's face facts, isn't that cool? Don't have to deal with JavaScript and JavaScriptism and the Javium scripties. I just don't like it. Um, I like this. And even, you know, other things that you can have. It is nice to be able to have that documentation offline ready for you. It updates and other good things. And so even here working in Arduino, look, you've been saying to yourself, my God, there really are all of these now? Oh yeah. You can also have um, tabs. Well, at least I thought you could have tabs maybe. Yeah, new tab, there we go. Yeah, so you can have, oh, I forgot some of the tricks that I knew once in Vim. Huh, now you got them. The point is we can look these things up and therefore get our work done. And that's much, much like with any programming done today. Most of your work is keeping the manual around and hoping that the manual is written by somebody who writes. But otherwise, the syntax is not exactly C, but it's really a lot of these things. If you've been reading enough code, the only thing you'll go is, okay, so we just don't have semicolons because the indentation is a fixed value, is a determined value. But then in turn, the reading is simple. It's discouraging me from nesting too far. If, if, okay, I'll stop there. But buffer value is decremented by one. Okay. It's not decrement, decrement. Okay, it's not as short as that, but it's also if some little kid were trying to do this, they wouldn't have to guess what that is. They go, oh, it's the minusy thing in a one. Yep. Moving forward, if the value is this at 19, once it crosses 20, go back to zero and then go get the latest buffer value, which we'd started with zero and then show it. And then that's it. This is the main. Um, there are a couple of things I forgot to put in here. And uh, because I, it ran, so I was like, I'm okay. No, there are more things. And we'll take one simple example that will come in handy because the point is, this is going to be a subset of a larger set of things that make it so by shaking, using that as a random generator, and then coming to a value based on how many dice you want and how many sides. That That's code I think I showed last time, and if I if you didn't get to see it, let's look at it now. We'll pull a pie charm because that's where I had it sitting. It might take a while for that to load. So I'll sing while we're waiting. No, um, I mean, I could sing, but that's not why you're here. Instead, what we want is, it, my God, that's going to take forever. Well, while that's going on, is that we've now got, ah, yes. Hi, you're running slow. Um, yeah, strange. Oh, probably because of all the other stuff going on. I'll save up some, some save myself some RAM. Uh, oh yeah, there's the clip, but I'm actually gonna close. Oh yeah, in case you're wondering, there's, there is a page that's just the comparisons of, of the two and the one in particular, how much flash, things like that. But I'm gonna close that out so we can get some RAM back. I like it dark scary. So here is, I, I showed this last time. This was the code where I've actually got real variable, where real subroutines are fine. So again, from random import star, uh, define entree. It's like, this is where we get the question to a person. Now this is all going on the command line. I probably showed this before, but let's see. Uh, is this in Python dice? Yes. Okay. So if I just say, I think I can get away with it doing it this way. Um, save all. Oh, right, that doesn't work here because we're still in Windows. Um, I want four dice. Oh, let me make this bigger. Uh, can I just, 
No. Uh, uh, well, I'll move it up so you can see it a little better. But how many die? How many sides per die? And we'll just say six. Your roll of a four-sided. We'll now just take this so you can read it, and I'll put it in its own little page. Your No, no, this is all happening local to the machine. Um, now there are ways to do that, uh, but frankly, for most of us with our security interests, shall we say, having everything local is really kind of nice. It's one of the, also the great things about these little things is they themselves are, since they're full computers, uh, even if they're not running a full OS, there's a surprising amount that they can tell you and log and give you without you having to worry about, say, the problem that happened when Spark became Electron and decided that everything is theirs. I don't trust you. But many of these tools also do integrate with, say, GitLab, GitHub, any of those other tools where you're storing and doing version control. Um, and in fact, kind of expect it in many ways. But you'll notice that we have this output, but that couldn't, is not ready to go here. So I'm going to want to use this script and my other script in some larger thing that's going to call them. Now, in Python, there's a very simple way to decide that something is going to be essentially a library, but really more just like, oh, I'm going to call this as well. And it is a known little, well, you don't know it yet, and I keep forgetting it. So rather than pretend I know it, main, yes. Now, yes, the main is not a package. What does it mean? But no, there's somebody who did a nice write up. And of course, I don't see if this is the one that shows it. I think it is this one. Um, so this is a, ah, here we go. This is where we start getting into the weirder, more Python specific side of Python, is that it's very common to add this to almost any script that if double underscore name is equal to main, double underscore main, double underscore, invoke the real code. In other words, if I am calling this program by its name, just run it, that's fine. If I'm not, don't run it. It allows you to say, don't just invoke this if it's being called from somewhere else. Now, one of the points that people try, if they were, we really want to get into esoterica, we could get into, well, it's not strictly a library, it's not strictly this, thing. but the, the simple importance of adding this little, the equivalent of having to add standard IO almost every time in C or, you know, getting familiar with some of the in and out directionals um, that if you're coming from the Unix world are very familiar, but if you're not are going to seem weird. This is one of those where you wouldn't have guessed it, but when you look at it, okay, now that I know this thing, so how would I have ever used this? Well, cut and paste is your friend, but we all learn better when we don't just cut and paste, don't we? So if, yeah, okay, I don't have to actually double anything. If name is same as main. main, is that right? Yeah, is that right? Yeah, and that weird colon, but notice self indentation so that you're not having to, to stress about it. Then what was the name of this freaking thing? But, oh, right, button mash. Oh, I didn't give a name to its, Sorry, I'm also now starting to get really parched because, so I'll follow with you, but I'm going to mute in a moment. But we will learn whether or not this magic, yeah, don't I seem smooth. Um, oh, this is Moo. Yep, M-U, the M Moo editor. You can even see in the corner, uh, version 1.0.3 which for some reason this is one of those rare moments where it's the easiest to get the latest version in Windows, even though I don't know why, it's actually tricky to get it on uh, Linux. I was having a fit trying to get it on there. And I, 
you know, like, oh, I followed the steps. No, I've still got the old one. But I think we can get away with that mesh. So now I'm actually not sure that's going to work that way because I am a noob in many ways. I've done Hello World a lot of times. And yeah, I wrote all of this. Um, but you know, you start getting that problem of, oh, I really need to focus. We all have that. But you can, but all of you are probably starting to get to that thought in your head of you're barely paying attention and you came up with this. I can kick that thing's ass. Well, kick that thing's butt. Sorry, there's a kid. So Yes, and I expect it of you. I think each of you in this room and on the internet, a magical place full of yelling people could definitely do something cooler. Now, here's the thing. Since I'm in Moo, I'm not sure if it's going to work right. I want to see if I do the same on the other side here, where I do actually have. Um, so in this case, La 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 la, sorrow. How do I make it bigger? Uh, I guess I'm not today. Um, now, maybe if I can I drag. Mm, no, but I will leave that at that. Um, so, yes, in this case, you see I'm defining all these pieces, blah, 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 and that the final major run is that does this bit. So, so you end up with your. You're in the, the sort of traditional put the, if you don't define the main, it's going to be down here at the bottom, mostly because it's one of the things in Python because of its restrictions is it wants you to define everything before you get to main. And you might be thinking, but wait, it's, a, it's an interpreted language. Yes, but that's also sort of why, because it wants to know that when it finally gets down to run this defined thing until this, that when you're doing it, it has all those things loaded in. And not just remotely, because this is the thing that we didn't really get to spend too much time with last time, but I do want to uh, please allow four to six weeks for delivery. <sighs> Groovy, go. So this is the REPL. This is the place where you Right, you know, where you come up with code and you can actually add each line or even just paste in every line from a thing, but it can tell you along the way, hey, here's what you missed. So something as simple as if we even look at, let's see, if I say, oh, right, let's say, if, so remember that we had to import the random library. Now I am calling that, and you'll also notice here at other points, I'm doing things like, I'm saying this is, this variable is a string, is, is turns the input that I get into a string, do, 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 do. So you do have types that you can define as you go along as you need them. Um, but you know, if and else if prints. Now, here's another place where if you just do what you're used to doing from another language, you'll get, you'll get yelled at and you won't know why this, thing of this is for printf where if you're dealing the, the equivalent of okay you're going to call your variables while you're going through this here we go that you do f single quote and then do that for each line why well I fear i'm losing people um that uh you get so it, it kind of makes it so that the formatting is very tight as we say so that you can come back and read it later it does mean that there's going to always be a little bit of something when you're writing. Um, now I feel I should probably slow myself back down and ask, oh, oh, you have a, yes. Uh, Sean has an explanation about name and I would love it. So um, uh, can I just give Sean, uh, you can take the floor. Um, if, Hi. Oh, there you are, perfect, thank you. I'm here. Yeah. Uh, so in short, and this is a very simplistic explanation, but this is how I came to understand it. Uh, playing with Python. Oh, right. You guys can. If uh, Dunder name equals Dunder main and it, this Dunder stuff is Python specific. It, it's right. Dunder refers to the underline. underscores before and after these things. 
So if the name of the module is main, which means if Python is executing this module by itself as a standalone, possibly importing things into it, that makes this module main. So it will execute the main function or uh, whatever button mash or whatever you call the main function. Most of the time it's main. Um, otherwise, it does not do that. And that allows you to import it or import other functions or classes from it without actually executing it automatically. Thank you very much. I, uh, uh, I th and also we are getting low on time. So I feel like I've been kind of hogging do. So I, I'm just gonna stop at this point, even though it barely started and ask if anyone here has questions or come up with ideas that they want to work on. Take my dare. Oh. Yeah. Ah. So, um, so for Moo, the simple one, and uh, this, this we covered last time, but again, it is, oh, sorry. Yeah, that would be a, that would be helpful. Uh, I swear I used to be smooth. Here we go. So you go to codewith.moo. Uh, the other parts will show up anyway. So codewith.moo to get the moo editor. In you can even get it if you've already got Python, you can get it as a package using pip3 or what have you, depending on how your configuration is. Um, and I've also mentioned that this is something you can, that in the Linux world, um, and there's a surprising amount of it, that it can be from Snap, from uh, snapcraft.io to go install Snap and then get the parts from there. Same place you can also get uh, what I'm using right now, which is the other program I'm using, PyCharm. Now I have the professional edition, so there's ever so slight differences, but it's totally available right there. In this case, that the publisher is JetBrains and it'll have all of their material available. But the advantage is that the EDU, the educational version is the free version and you can just get started without worrying about other things that cost money. So, and, and like I say, obviously, so, and even if you're like stuck at another machine, like I'm stuck here on my old Windows 10 laptop, you can always install Python. You can always just go get that from as simple as, that's right, python.org. But you can, um, what might be a little more fun instead of, because installing this, it gives you a whole lot of the documentation, lots of cool stuff. But there's one other way when you're stuck in this world that you can, Oh, cool, it's the kitty. Um, so the, is this tool called Commander? I don't know if you guys have seen this before. I'll just shrink it a little, but not too much. There we go. It is an entirely, uh, it's an integration of a tool called ConEMU. So it's a console emulator, which allows you to run a whole bunch of programs based on things, but it basically can treat it brings in the existing, um, uh, the, the busy box set of tools. So most of a good chunk of bash into a windows environment and a whole bunch of pieces. So you have, you have normal grep and it's help. You have said and awk, just like you should always have had, of course. Um, but uh, it is, and so, and of course, it allows, you might say, well, I mean, I'd like to work on something else too. Like, I'd like another tab. There you go, you got tabs. No problem there. I don't know why it's slow to that. And yes, you can go see up the PS1, just like you do. Um, you can, you have your normal config files. In fact, it even just, you know, calls them straight from the usual places. It's a cool tool. And that one, if you're keeping track at home, since I can never remember if it's actually, oh, it is now commander.net. It used to be for years, it was a weird thing. And now, yeah. 
works, integrates with Git, so you don't have to go get a separate copy of Git, all that nice stuff. And if you've already got 7-zip, you can download a half-size package of only 52 megabytes to install it. And the install is drag over. Things to have. Oh, and some keyboard shortcuts. So there's that. Questions? No. OK. Well, thank you all, because I know we're going to have to scatter. And I'm sure we've got bills on our tables. And those of you who are at home, thank whomever made your food. But uh, yeah, I know I'm juiced about this, even if I'm like totally noob about it, because it's giving me a chance to explore with a lot more devices with and just get into some more raw thinking. And if you've got questions about any books and stuff, I've got a few that I've tried to like. So stuff, but thank you all very much. Any other questions from, uh, from the real crew here, from the folks online? Yeah. Hey, thank you all very much. Yay. I turned myself off now. Uh, usually he does it a couple days after the meeting. So, cause I know I got it last time as well. Um, if you, when you go looking, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna actually bring it up. I'm going to bring up my email because I can't wait to be spam, but also because I haven't clicked on it yet. So I can go and remind myself, I kept it on red. So, oh, oh wait, I'm not showing anymore. <laughs> but okay, the thing you're looking for is it will be directly from Rick and the subject will probably be Zoom recording. So for example, last month, yeah, he actually had it up the next day. Um, copy the link below, share, the link is, is straight from the Zoom people and, um, and it's right up there. Yay! Don't forget to tip. They work hard and we don't pay them enough. And they're, you know, Serbians, they know how to fight. trousers a can. they really not discriminating and they'll jump on everything what a one time this guy had this whole story on um this american life about how he was mac he was absolutely transfixed because he saw a goat on top of the couch like this is the rarest event i've ever seen and then basically later on when he's 
finally comes back to these people. It's like, we found these things about you. How did you find this? It? It's like, oh, we saw the goat. Like, oh, the goat does that all the time. That's what goats do. They jump up. Goat parkour is a thing. Hmm. If I had known that, there would be a story. 